Today we're going to talk a little bit about installing a automatic bilge pump in a little Hairshoff 12 and a half. And this system is about as simple as you can get. Uh, all we're going to have is a pump uh, and a battery. This pump happens to be the, the pretty standard pump that you'll find for a submergible bilge pump. It has a little impeller here. It's a centrifugal style pump. And then there's a float switch here that's also part of the pump. So when this is installed, uh, that float switch uh, moves up. When you have uh, enough water in the bilge, it turns the pump on and then uh, shuts the pump off when, uh, when it pumps all the water out. It's just going to sit down here in the, in the bottom of the bilge. The, the base is already attached. Um, and it just snaps into place there. This bilge pump is designed to be mounted uh, fore and aft with the output facing aft. So that's uh, the way this is designed and um, that's the way we're going to install it. Uh, we've got a hose here that takes a loop up near the deck and uh, then goes overboard. We'll attach it with this stainless steel hose clamp. One of the things about a stainless steel hose clamp is you need to make sure that both the the band is stainless and the screw itself is stainless. The typical one you'll get from an automotive store will be steel and it'll look nice and shiny but it's not all stainless and you'll have lots of trouble with that in the future. Alright, so we're going to pull the pump out and uh, then install this hose because it's pretty tight here with the floor. There's the pump comes out. We'll put this clamp on. This slides on there like this. And then the whole thing can snap back into place. Good to go there. There it is. And then we can tighten that hose clamp up. Hose clamp's tight. I like to have it so that obviously the screw's accessible. I'll get a couple clamps on here later. And uh, the pump is physically installed at that point. Now what we're going to do with the with um, the wires here, notice there's three wires here. There's a black, a brown, and then a third wire here, this is the brown one with the white stripe, is designed for the manual switch so that you could actually turn the pump on uh, manually. In this particular case, we're not going to be set up that way. We're just going to leave it in the fully automatic mode, and that will then allow us uh, to just hook this up and leave it be, and we won't have to worry about it. Uh, so I've dead-ended the, the, the one wire here, and now I'm left with just the uh, black and the, and the brown. The black happens to be the negative and the uh, brown is the positive and I've also set these up uh, so they're polarized you notice that they're opposite each other so that when you hook this pump up you can't hook it up uh, backwards. I've got a small um, what's called an AGM battery absorbed glass mat um, and this would be all we're going to be running on this particular boat is the is the bilge pump and the neat thing about the absorbed glass mat battery is that it's totally sealed and we can actually mount it if we wanted to. We could mount it sideways or we could mount it upside down. Um, and nothing will ever leak. So this is a really uh, great um, uh, battery to have for, uh, certainly on a boat, where you don't have to be dealing with maintenance of the, of the battery. We have a, a battery bracket arrangement down in here. Um, it's designed to keep the battery from moving side to side or fore and aft. And then we have this strap here that's set up so that we can tie the battery in place so it uh, can't even move up and down. So that's going to keep the battery firmly in place. So it sets down in there like that. And then we have this strap that runs under the bracket, over the battery and holds that battery in place. All right, so this is going to be strapped down and tight and it won't move in any direction at that point. All right, so, this is going to be so the next thing we want to do is talk about hooking the bilge pump up to the battery. The newer convention to battery uh, wire coloring is red for positive and yellow for the negative. Uh, on the bilge pump itself, you notice that we had a uh, color coding that came from the bilge pump manufacturer. Black was the negative and brown was the positive. So a little confusion there in terms of color coding, but uh, that's the standard for bilge pump. Uh, but the standard for coming off of a wire or off a battery would be uh, the red and the yellow. So that's what we're going to go to. Uh, on the red side here, this is the positive side. Uh, we're required to fuse uh, the, the positive side of the, of the uh, uh, wire that's coming off the battery. In this particular case, the pump itself uh, tells us the fuse size that we should use. So if we look at the pump, the pump on the top of the pump is actually uh, telling us that 
that we need to fuse this particular uh, pump at 3 amps. Um, and what that's doing is that in case the pump was ever to get in a situation that we call locked rotor, this is where the, uh, a piece of wood or something like that gets stuck in the impeller of the pump and the pump gets stuck in the on position. We want to be able to protect that pump by putting a fuse in place uh, that will protect it, that the fuse will blow before the, the pump actually uh, destroys itself or catches on fire. So in this particular case, the pump manufacturer is telling us uh, to use a 3 amp fuse. So that's what we have in here is a, is a 3 amp fuse, meaning that if uh, the current exceeds 3 amps, it will then blow and the pump will actually shut off, but we won't do any damage to the wiring or to the pump. So that's in series with our positive lead. This is going to go to our positive post of our battery, and this is the yellow is going to go to our, our negative post. Um, and what I've done on the pump already, as I mentioned, was we've got a, a male and female a spade connection here, and we're going to make the same uh, up uh, on our battery end so that if we ever want to uh, disconnect the pump for whatever reason, it's a quick disconnect. We have several connectors here, and they come in lots of different colors, and the color coding is actually has to do with the wire size. In our particular case, uh, we're going to be using 16 gauge wire, and so what we're going to be using is uh, blue uh, connectors. So we have these blue connectors here, and uh, these are actually what we call heat shrink style connectors. So actually, after we crimp the connection, then we'll be able to um, heat the end here. It'll shrink, and we wind up with a um, with a fitting like we see right here, that's um, sealed completely all the way around. And that's nice to have, especially in a bilge operation. What we're going to do now is we're going to strip the ends of of the of the wire off, the insulation off. Uh, so that we can put the wire up inside the connector and then crimp that wire at the, uh, at the connector itself. Okay. A couple ways we can do that. We've got lots of different tools here uh, for stripping the wire off. This is a, a handy one here. Uh, uh, it actually has the gauges marked out across the, the holes there and um, it kind of works neat. This, this comes down first and holds the wire and then as you pull on it, it will strip the wire end off. We'll, we'll take a look at that. I guess we can do this one that way right now. So uh, we're going to put this into the 16-gauge um, slot. That's about the amount that we want to have stripped off. I can do this there, and it just strips the end of the wire off. And so now the end of the wire is exposed. We'll be able to uh, put it up inside the crimp connector and then crimp that. Of course we want to make sure we've got the right one going to the to the right lead on the on the pump. So in this particular case the red is going to the brown. So we're actually going to want the female uh, clip to the uh, crimp to the red um, so that when we put these two together then uh, we've got the, our wire uh, in the right direction. Okay. So there's, uh, there's the, the connector in place. And there's a couple of different crimpers we can use. I think this is the standard uh, one that most people are familiar with. You can find this at an automotive uh, store. And notice at the end here, there's um, red, blue, and yellow indicators. And those indicators are for the, for the size of the connector that we're using. So the terminal end. So in this particular case, we're using uh, a blue terminal end, so we would use this particular set of jaws. Okay, so here's another uh, crimping tool we can use, a little um, heavier duty than the last one that I just showed you. But notice it's marked in the same fashion. So we've got the red, the blue, and the yellow, and that's an indicator of, of the terminal that we're going to crimp. So in this case, we're going to uh, be crimping the blue, which is the center one there. We're going to set this into place here. Make sure the wire is, is pushed all the way into, into place. And then it releases itself when, it's, when the crimp is done. And now that's a nice tight crimp. Right. Um, we can also use this tool. This is a handy little tool for stripping. A little different than the last one that I showed you. This one's kind of neat. You just put the wire in place. Uh, to the length that you want to strip it. Pull the 
handle down, and you're done. And that one, you don't need to determine what wire gauge it is. Just, uh, that, that one will strip anything from um, a 20 gauge all the way up to about a 10 gauge wire. So that's kind of a handy tool to have also. Um, so any of these tools um, work well. So here's the, the uh, last one. This is going to be on our negative side. That's the yellow in this particular case. And we're going to go ahead and um, slide it up there. This time, just to show you, we'll use this crimper. Uh, but again, uh, even though the wire is yellow, the terminal end is blue. So we're going to use the we're going to use the blue uh, jaws in this particular case. Now this one doesn't this one doesn't release itself automatically. You've got to just push the wire in there. We're going to crimp that down and then release it. So. Both of those do, a, do a, a great job. You can see where the crimp is right here in the middle of, the, of where the wire um, is up inside the barrel there of the terminal. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use a heat gun, and we're just going to heat up the, the, uh, the collar here. And once the collar's hot, you'll see that it shrinks right tight around the, right tight around the wire. Right, and tight. And we've got a nice watertight seal at that end, anyways, of the uh, of the connection. So let's make sure we have things correct. The black on the pump in, is the negative, which is our yellow uh, coming off the battery. So those will slide together. And then uh, the brown is the positive on the battery side, and those will slide together. Now this is not a watertight connection. We're going to hold it up out of the bilge. Uh, you could put a little silicone on that also if you wanted to seal those up good and tight. But this allows us to be able to change the pump out if we need to without redoing the whole battery wiring again. All right. So this is going to, we'll, we'll tie this up in the bilge here when we're finished. We're going to bring the positive and the negative leads uh, up to the battery. Positive again is the red, it's the one with the fuse in it. And so we'll go ahead and connect the positive here. And the negative, the yellow, is going to come over to the negative side. Right. And then I'm going to tighten, the, tighten our connections up here. I want to make sure you don't touch the two terminals together with your wrench, that's a disaster. But now I've got access to my fuse right here if I ever need it. This is all going to stay up high out of the bilge. And at this point now we should be able to, on this particular pump it actually has a little manual override that you can turn the pump on and off. And there it is, the pump comes on. And since the bilge is empty, it shuts off automatically. All right, so all we've got left now is to tie up the wires up out of the bilge. I've got a little terminal block here that allows us to run a wire tie through it, which is pretty handy. That ties all the wires up out of the bilge. We've got our connections that are easy access. We've got our fuse that's easy access and our pump. And there you have it. That's a installation, simple installation anyways, of a bilge pump in a little 12 and a half.